What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to week two of WBE VGC. This week we are facing Cybertron VGC, aka Aaron Zhang. You already know who he is, you guys already know who Aaron Zhang is. I have no doubt in my mind you know who Aaron Zhang is. So, we're facing him in the Melbourne Rotoms. Um, right now we're selecting the rules and stuff. No face cam for today because I feel a little bit, you know, gross. <laughs> and also I'm packing up some stuff, so I'm a bit busy, I don't feel like setting up the green screen. But before we get into the battle, do me a favor, leave a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, do everything you can, join the Discord uh, to support your Chicago Black Flock, and let's get into the team. What's up guys, welcome to the team builder. I'm recording this a couple of days after the fact because um, I was busy, I was moving into my new apartment, which is very nice, I like my new apartment. We're going to be doing some live streams here soon, so uh, be ready for that. So, in this team builder, uh, I needed to prepare for the Melbourne Rotoms. Now, he has a couple of things that are pretty threatening to me, but mostly I was just concerned about the uh, the Primarina in particular, which is the overall kill leader for the WBE as of week one, because it got all eight kills in its last match, which is completely ridiculous. So we need to be prepared for that. Uh, in, in preparation for this uh, match, I decided that Mudsdale would be one of my key players. We're running a very, very defensive Mudsdale, special defensive in fact. Sassy Nature, 196 HP, 60 defense, 252 special defense, 0 speed IVs, high horsepower, close combat, rock slide, and heavy slam. This thing has no attack investment because we're going to be going with a uh, a set that <laughs> is self-swaggering. We have swagger on the on the Slow King, spoilers, uh, which under Trick Room, it's going to allow me to underspeed my own Mudsdale, go for a swagger, double my attack stat, which while it doesn't actually allow me to pick up Oko on the um, Primarina, it changes a two-shot to still a two shot so I decided it wasn't worth running uh, so much attack investment when I could just boost my attack stat and do essentially the same thing I would have done to the Primarina but with more bulk on it so no attack in this Mudsdale just a lot of special defense which when I'm Dynamaxed I'm able to get three shot by that thing possibly four shot if I actually go for a max quake which is really really nice so yeah a very scary Pokemon on my side of the field once Trick Room goes up it's very difficult to deal with we're running a Trick Room Slow King 0 attack IV, 0 speed IVs, 252 HP, 140 defense, 116 special defense with a relaxed nature. This thing is holding a Cobra Berry because I want to make sure that it's able to take a max darkness crit from a Unpheasant. So it's it's a very bulky Pokemon. Its moveset is Swagger, Trick Room, Psychic, Yawn. Uh, the Oblivious Nature makes it, or the Oblivious ability makes it so we can't be taunted, which is really nice versus a Whimsicott in particular. Uh, so yeah, uh, with that moveset, we're able to set up the Trick Room, go for a Swagger under a Mudsdale. Normal stuff. Psychic's just there as an offensive option with uh, Stab. Next up, we have Bubuki's the Klefki, holding a Mental Herb with the ability Prankster. 252 HP, 148 Defense, 108 Special Defense, Bold Nature, 0 Attack IVs, Reflect, Light Screen, Sunny Day, Flash Cannon. Uh, essentially, that moveset is just meant to set up some screens, uh, get the Sunny Day off in case I decide to go Sun Mode. And Flash Cannon is just my best stab option to deal with this team overall. It hits a lot of things for a decent amount of damage. The Sigalyph, the... Uh, Glaceon, the Whimsicott, don't enjoy taking that hit. Dazzling Gleam would have been okay for breaking Sashes and getting some spread off, but I felt like uh, we get more out of Flash Cannon in the end here, because it, it has the option, or has the capability of lowering Special Defense, which could be really nice in the end game. Next up, we have... Oh, and also it's holding a Mental Herb, because I don't want to get taunted by a Whimsicott. Next up, we're running a Hitmontop named Latif, with the Eject button, Intimidate, 252 HP, 84 Attack, 172 Defense, Impus Nature... Fake out, close combat, wide guard, and faint. Now, faint is just important for uh, getting some <laughs> protect breaks, I guess, just so I can hit some things with some power, powerful moves, whether it be a solar powered Charizard hit or a max quake or something for, at full power uh, from my Mudsdale. Uh, this thing is running enough attack where I two shot the Gigalith every single time, which is really nice. Uh, I anticipated a bulkier Gigalith, so I just calced for worst case scenario. We just always two shot it, which is super cool. Uh, it's running just Fizz Def to make sure I don't get, uh, like, I believe it's a two shot or a three shot from Excadrill after Intimidate is what that was for. So that's really nice. Next up, we have Flogger the Venusaur with the Life Orb, Chlorophyll, 28 HP, 252 Special Attack, 228 Speed, and a Modest Nature, zero attack IVs, Leaf Storm, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb, Protect. This thing is an offensive Venusaur, no Sleep Powder this week because I anticipate him running Safeguard on something to, uh, just stop that overall. Uh, he knows that I have the... <laughs> that I have the Venusaur, which is a very scary Pokemon to face if the sun goes up. Uh, this Pokemon is pretty much just going to be a really nice option versus the Toxtricity since I'm running the Earth Power. Uh, under Sun, it's very hard to stop. 
Max Ooze is going to be able to boost my special attack, and Leaf Storm, when I turn into Max Overgrowth, is going to be a very threatening hit versus the Primarina. Uh, the reason we're running only two, uh, 228 speed is so we outspeed base 75 Pokemon like that Toxtricity we have there, uh, and under the Sun, I'm still going to be faster than him under Tailwind, which is going to be really important. Finally, we have Krakatawa, the Charizard, with a choice specs on it this week. Solar Power, 12 HP, 12 Defense, 244 Special Attack, 4 Special Defense, 236 Speed. Uh, this thing was speed crept for the Sigilyph, so we're always going to be outspeeding his fastest Pokemon that isn't a Whimsicott. Um, I forget what it was for defensively. Uh, we were originally holding a Charty Berry and then switched it last second. Uh, so it, it, it could have just been 252, 252, but we didn't end up switching it. Um, originally, that was going to allow me to live like Max Rockfall off of Excadrill with um, with the Charty Berry, but it, it's just kind of wasted EVs on my part, which was my bad. <laughs> We're running a Tim of Nature, though. Uh, Scorching Sands to hit the Toxtricity if it comes down to that. Heat Wave for a devastating hit with the Solar Power. Solar Beam for a uh, coverage move to hit his uh, Rock Pokemon, the uh, Gigalith, or uh, the Primarina for super effective. And Blast Burn as just the most powerful G-Max Wildfire you could see uh, possible. So, yeah, that's the team builder for this week. And also, be sure to pick up your Chicago Black Flock merch if you guys want to support the team. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the battle. WBE Week 2. I'm really excited, dude. I've never played Aaron before. I played James, played Wolf on the ladder, played a lot of really, really talented players, but never played Cybertron yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to say the least. I'm excited to say the least, man. But yeah, uh, this is a really interesting team. Like, we didn't bring too much sauce this week. However, I think Max Special Defense Mudsdale is kind of saucy, in my opinion. It's 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 a little bit it's a little bit wacky to say the least. But that pre marina is definitely gonna be an issue. So let's see let's see what we got. Yeah, the biggest issue on his side of the field is definitely pre marina. But I think like just the hybrid of both Trick Room with Mudsdale and the um and the fast option with Venusaur and Specs Charizard is going to be a really powerful thing for this match. All right, he's he's taking a minute to pick his bond, so I guess I guess I'll just you know fill in the time, talk about some stuff. Uh, so what's your guys' favorite color? What's your guys' favorite? Oh no, okay, cool. No more awkward conversation. We just we just get right into it, man. All right, so we did bring the Prem in, and he actually brought the Toxtricity, which I didn't think he would. I really didn't expect him to bring the Toxtricity this week because I thought that. He'd be way too scared of that Mudsdale, but I guess it makes sense. I guess it does make sense. Um, my Slowking is EV'd to be able to take a Max Darkness from the Unpheasant. So his team's actually really, really scary in my opinion. Um, I have to play very carefully. I think Klefki's always going to be in the lead. Um, and Mudsdale in the lead is also very, very nice. I might not even immediately go for the Trick Room here. I think I might go for a... Um, this is scary, man. I might actually just go for a little bit of a crazier play here. Um, Hitmontop doesn't seem bad. And I think maybe Slowking. So I, I kind of want to go Slowking, but I also want to go Charizard. Uh, and the main reason I want to bring Charizard is because we are bringing Scorching Sand. So that's something. Um, maybe I should just go for the immediate Trick Room. I have to think about this. I think I'm going to go for the immediate Trick Room. Yeah, I think I'm going to go immediate Trick Room. We have very little special attackers, but... Oh, wait, I messed that up. Messed it up. Switch these guys. There we go. First, second, third, fourth. Okay. I didn't mess that up, right? Cool. We're going to go for the immediate Trick Room. I mean, he doesn't have a way of stopping it. We're running Oblivious on the uh, Slowking. And we have Mental Herb on our Klefki, so it shouldn't be hard to survive, you know? All right. So let's let's kick off week two, man. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned. I'm a little bit concerned, man. Like, when you're looking at his team on paper, it's not that scary. But when you actually face it, it's like, holy crap, what are we doing here? All right. Um, not too concerned about this lead, to be honest. I think I'm actually just going to go ahead and set up a uh, Reflect in my Trick Room, because you can't stop me. I am oblivious. I am oblivious, right? Okay, cool. Can't be taunted. Please excuse the barking dog if you hear it. That is my sister's. <laughs> so we're going to trick room up here. Yeah, that is my play. He has he only has a 50% chance to crit, so we might not even need to go down to our Culpa Berry. 
but the Culber Berry is going to allow us to live the Night Slash, or the, the Max Darkness if he decides to go for that. He doesn't even have to actually go for it. He doesn't have to Dynamax or anything, because honestly, if he Dynamaxes here, I'm in a really, really good spot, since I always love the hit. But the, the issue there is, um, he gets a <clears throat> I just burped. I'm so gross. He, he gets a guaranteed crit by just going for it. But I think with the reduced damage... Oh, he just Brave Birds. That's fine. I should always take that, then. Oh, I'm stupid. He actually just straight up got the crit. <laughs> Alright, well... I'm surprised that he's, he didn't have the Night Slash there, to be honest, but I think I'm fine with that. Even without the Trick Room, I might be able to actually pull something off here. We are running Max Special Defense on the Mudsdale, and I could Dynamax immediately to prevent Grass Knot damage, which I might have to, which I really hate. I really hate that I have to Grass Knot immediately. Let me go for the Flash Cannon into the Whimsicott, and I'm actually just going to go ahead and uh, go for the Max Steel Spike for the KO. Actually... Yeah, I'm going to max Steel Spike for the KO. And I'm going for Flash Cannon just because I'm like, okay, if, if he is going to... If he's going to go for the Grass Knot, um, I can't play around with that at all. I cannot play around with that. But we do know now that... Yeah, that 50% crit chance it is, is nothing to mess around with here. Here's the fake tears. Ooh, what do you got? What do you got for me, man? There's the Brave Bird. It's not going to do too much. We're going to go ahead and double into it. Kind of wish I max Quaked now. But the only reason I doubled into it was to um, prevent the Sash, if he did have it. We do get a bit of a defense boost. Um, the Pre Marina is most certainly coming out. However, I can avoid a KO by max quaking and going for my light screen. Primarina is my number one concern right now. 100% the scariest thing in the field. There it is. Alright. So, we did take a little bit of damage there. Actually, it's probably in my best interest right now to Sunny Day. Because... It does more to stop the water move than anything else would. So I'm going to Sunny Day and I'm going to Max Quake. Because here's the thing, when, when you're in doubles, the light screen actually, it does give you a special defense boost. However, there's no doubt in my mind he's going to be going for a water move here. Uh, so the special defense boost that you would get from, from the screens and doubles is slightly less than the, <laughs> than the um, defense boost you get versus, like, water moves in uh, Sun, if that makes sense. At least I'm 90% sure that's how that works. I might be stupid. I might be really stupid. So let me Sunny Day up here. It'll help me live the hit. And this Max Special Defense Assault Vest, I better take this, man. I better take this. Alright, we take nothing there. No crit for him. There's the max hailstorm. Oh god, I should have light screened. Alright, well, that's a little bit annoying. <laughs> How much am I doing? Not much. I do get a bit of a special defense boost, which is nice. The hailstorm was such a good play on his on his part, man. Such a good play on his part. Here's the thing, um, I don't believe we saw a life orb on his side, so he's, he might be a salt vest, or even throat spray. I'm going to go ahead and scout for some moves here. I'm not going to live this hit, <laughs> I'm not going to live this hit, uh, so I have to just, I just, I just gotta do this right now. I'm going to double into the, oh did I just max quake the unpheasant like a moron? I did, but it, it won't matter. It won't matter. This is essentially me forfeiting and just trying to get as much info as I can. I meant to max rock fall the unpheasant. Or max steel spike. Either one of those, really. I 
There's the U-turn. We all right. That is some more info. He's definitely running the Super Lux set. <laughs> we can tell at this point. There's the Gigalith. Okay. Dude, what if we actually made like a goat call right here? What if we actually made a goat call that won us the match? It didn't, but it'd be hilarious. Let's see if we can get an item. Weakness policy, I assume? No weakness policy. Alright. Okay. So let me think, do I even have an out here? I mean, we got a ton of special defense boost on the Klefki, and Klefki might actually be able to win this because of that, <laughs> which is kind of wacky to think about. Because, like, how, what does he have to hit the Klefki? Just this chip damage, really. He's not doing too much with Pre-Marina. We got to reflect up. Let, let's, let's try this. Let, let's see what we can do here. Let, let's see what we can do. Get an Intimidate off. Alright. Let me go for the light screen here. And close combat should catch everything he has. What if Klefki just freaking 3v1s this team? Alright, how much are we doing here? That's enough for a KO. Dude, if Klefki pulls this off, I'm gonna freak. I'm gonna freak it, dude. There's the Max Starfall. That should KO the, the um, Hitmontop, I believe. Yeah. So. Um... I could go for a sunny day immediately. I'm a little bit concerned about Unpheasant possibly carrying like Heat Wave or something. My Reflect is worn off, so Unpheasant's gonna hurt. It's probably in my best interest just to go for the Flash Cannon into Unpheasant. Because Hail into Flash Cannon might KO, and I do have a ton of special defense on this Klefki at this point. So I'm just gonna target this Unpheasant. And with the with the chance to crit, like 50%. Mm, there's there, there's a good chance it wouldn't even matter if I set up a Reflect on the Unpheasant. So I'm hoping that this Flash Cannon into the Hail will do it. Plus the Bray Bird Recoil, because I'm assuming he doesn't have much for it, you know? Klefki's actually kind of gross. There's the Bray Bird. Don't do too much. Don't crit. If he doesn't crit, I think I can win. Oh, <gasps> you mad lad. Klefki, don't take much from this pre Marina. Oh my god. This is doable. Is it? Oh, it's not. It's not doable. Unless the, the hail has to knock him out here and I have to, like, super crit. Alright, how many turns of hail do we have? That might be the deciding factor here. I wasn't paying attention how much Hyper Voice did. But it's not worth my time to set up a sunny day. I should always just go for the Flash Cannon. And hope for a crit. Oh, he's Assault Vested as hell, dude. And we actually do live. <laughs> and there's the hail. That was a really close game one. Um, yeah, the Brave Bird was a really good call by him. Let me think. So we, we got a lot of good information there. It's most definitely Assault Vest on the pre Marina, considering Stab Flash Cannon did nothing. Um, fake Tears on Whimsicott along with Grass Knot was really scary on the lead. Um, I'm assuming his moveset for the Unpheasant is Scope Lens with... Let me get that lead card, man. Probably like Scope Lens with Brave Bird, U-Turn, Night Slash, and something else may protect... I would assume so. I would assume that's his last move. So we gotta play this a little bit more carefully. We gotta play this a bit more carefully. A lot more carefully, in fact. Venusaur kind of goes in on the lead, but I have to be real, real careful with that. I gotta be real careful. Alright. Let the battle begin. 
Um, I'm really scared about that unpheasant, to be honest. Unpheasant kind of messes me up. And with the tailwind, it's nothing to laugh at. Klefki kind of always comes to this matchup, though. So does Mudsdale. Um, I think I just have to attempt another trick room, to be honest. My my trick room setup is going to be Hitmontop Slow King this time, and I think I can do it with what I had. I, I think I can do it with what I had, but I have to lead Hitmontop this time to ensure that I don't get one shot by that stupid <laughs> by that stupid bird. Unpheasant's so scary, man. I have to be real careful around that thing. He could also adjust and lead Toxtricity, which would be disgusting. Absolutely disgusting, in fact. I was considering running Drill Run on my Hitmontop at one point with like an Assault Vest, but it just ain't worth it. It just ain't worth it, man. And if uh, Hitmontop ends up taking a hit on the lead, I don't mind it. I get in the Mudsdale for free. And if he doesn't crit, then Hitmontop's just going to get forced out by the eject button. So I think overall this is a relatively safe lead. I didn't have to think about it too much, to be honest. Um, the Toxtricity is really scaring out my son, like entirely. Alright, let's see what we can pull off here. Because I need the Swagger Strat for Mudsdale to really, really get some damage off. Toxtricity wins out. He knows, man. He knows. Alright. Let me think here. That's the G-Max, too. There's nothing to laugh at. Alright, so here's the thing. Um, Aaron is not, a, is not a dumb player. He knows that I should not stay in with Slowking, and that would likely go into Mudsdale. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm, I'm going to try to make a bit of a call here. I'm going to go hard Mudsdale for the Hitmontop. And I'm going to attempt this Trick Room. Because he knows my Slowking's not living that hit. Or does he? I honestly don't even know if I do. <laughs> which is funny. I'm going to do it. He knows I'm not a... I, I, he knows... <laughs> he knows that I'm not staying in with the Slow King, so I'm going to try to call him on that. I'm going to try to call him on that, and if this works out, I'm, I'm going to be so happy. I'm going to be so happy with myself. There's the Acid Spray. Oh god, no. Not like this. Not like this. This is not how you actually caught me on that. Don't do this to me. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I could have actually lived. I would have gotten my trick room off had I actually just gone with my gut there. So we had two big brain plays going on at the same time there, which I did not appreciate. I did not appreciate that, Aaron. You're going to have to cut that out. All right. Um, I'm going to go hit Montop here just to prevent any shenanigans with that, uh, any shenanigans with that Whimsicott. So I'm going to assume that he's probably carrying Protect on this um, Toxtricity, and he's not going to stay in. So I'm going to take this opportunity to double into this Whimsicott with a Fake Out and a Max Steel Spike. That, that's... Dude, he shut down Trick Room so hard. Had I, had I gone with my gut and I just went for the Fake Out on that Whimsicott... Man. Or actually, I guess had I not gone with my gut, had I played very straightforward... I at least appreciate the fact that Aaron isn't treating me like I'm someone that plays extremely straightforward. But there is no chance I don't Dynamax here, which he probably knows too. And he didn't Dynamax, which is interesting. Um, probably an Acid Spray? He knows the pre is his best G-Max, too. So he might be playing to that. Let's see if I can remove the Wounds Scout. That'd be that would be very, very good for me. Acid Spray? Yeah. Special Defense Drop. Don't appreciate that at all.
I'm not allowed. I'm not about to let him fake tears me either, so I have to be real, real careful with that. All right. Also, um, something that we should note is that it's either Scarf Toxtricity or a very, very, very slow Prankster Whimsicott. That's something we have to note if we manage to take it to game three, which <laughs> not looking amazing here. Not looking incredible. Y you, you definitely brought Pre-Marina. That's definitely what's coming out. Yeah, there it is. All right, well, we know Klefki kind of goes in versus Pre-Marina. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hope <laughs> I am going to hope that I can get Klefki in safely and get this max um <laughs> get this max uh ground move off to boost my special defense a bit so Klefki can freak it in the end game cuz I think without Unpheasant this is a lot easier for Klefki He definitely dropped the Unpheasant for the Toxtricity. There's probably a Gigalith or something in the back. There's the Acid Spray. Saw that coming. I wonder if we live this. I mean, we are at minus four, but we are literally max special defense with Dynamax and an Assault Vest. All right, he did not. He did not take that well. My, my child is dead. Mudsdale, if I see you explode again the rest of the season, you're off the team, man. You're off the team, man. Alright. Let's see. Um... Is there actually a way I can I can win this out? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, I can go for a fake out in the Toxtricity. <laughs> and sunny day up. Oh no, I should I should light screen. I should light screen. Maybe by the grace of crits I can do this. Cause he should go for the fairy move. Yeah, alright. Hit on top takes it, which I suppose is good. <laughs> Toxicity can't touch me. So I guess we should focus down Primarina here. I'll go ahead and I'll... I, I suppose I, I close combat it. <laughs> That's my strongest move versus it. Uh, and I'm going to set up a, a Sunny Day. Because this is his last turn he can go for a move, and if he doesn't go for the water move, then that's a very good turn for me. There's the Gigalith. Alright. Dude, imagine if I made another close combat call. That's going to do nothing. I actually did a relatively good amount, which is kind of insane. There's the Hailstorm. Two steps ahead. He's like, what's Max Geyser? I don't care about Max Geyser, man. I'm going to click the Hailstorm. Alright, I'm going to let him knock out my Klefki for the sake of uh, stats on the kill leaderboard. And then we're gonna then we're gonna get to a post game call with Aaron because uh, man, dude, even when I thought I had him figured out, he was one step ahead of me. Mad respect for that. All right, um, <laughs> literally, I I kind of have to just flash cannon here. <laughs> He's gonna earthquake. It's gonna knock me out or something. He's gotta have a ground move on that thing, right? 
That's a lot. No weakness policy, too. Hyper voice, how much do you do? Yeah, a lot. Stomach tantrum, there it is. Alright, so that's gonna be game. That is. Oh, no, not quite yet. Not quite yet. <laughs> Alright, and, uh, check it. Sunny day. A nice and bright day to win the game. A nice little happy sunny day. Draw some beautiful trees in the background. Good game, Aaron. <laughs> Alright, so, um... Definitely some, some stuff I could have done better. He, he definitely got me in that Pre-Marina, and Pre-Marina is going to stay on that kill leaderboard. If you don't know, Pre-Marina literally got all eight kills in his last in his last week of play. Uh, so, that how many kills did they get this week? An insane amount, to be honest. So, we're going to go and we're going to go to the uh, post-game call with Aaron. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I will see you over there. Aaron, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man. How are you? Uh, good. So, audience, um, I, I was not recording desktop audio, so any kind of initial uh, input from, from Aaron at, regarding <laughs> regarding what we had <laughs> talked about, any of the initial reactions are now lost to uh, lost to the void of time. Uh, so, I, I guess I guess we'll just try to <laughs> try to hit some new beats while also covering the same things. Um, I'm running Cobra Berry on my on my slow king because I was like, ah, yeah, I can I can take the the max darkness. Uh, to which Aaron said. I didn't have Max Darkness. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah when, <laughs> when Moxie told me that, I was like, oh, wow. Like, I maybe should have considered that. Uh, and, and actually, I didn't mention this when we were talking earlier, but like, I wasn't exactly how, sure how much you were going to commit to the Trick Room route because I was like, man, Sloking like doesn't look very strong going into this week because like Toxtricity alone threatens it a lot. Uh, and, you know, I was like, you know, what is God can get super effective grass type attacks? So when I was building, I was, you know, obviously I wanted Brave Bird, Giga Impact, and Protect on the Unpheasant. And I was like, what's the fourth move? And I was like, ah, I think U Turn makes some sense in case like, I lead into something I don't really like to go up against and like I could conserve on Pheasant for the late game. So when he told me you had Night Slash or you're preparing for Night Slash, first of all, I was like, wow, he thought about on Pheasant. Like props to him because I was hoping to like kind of just catch him off guard with that pick uh, in, in the first place. Yeah, dude. Um, With the Trick Room thing, I was like, here's the thing. Slow King is absolute garbage in this matchup. Mm -hmm. uh, however, it makes everything else so much better. Just literally Mudsdale was... I was looking at like the matchups. Mudsdale hits at least like four things on your team for super effective, and yep. a couple of those yep. with stab super effective. And also, my Mudsdale is—it's a really wacky spread. I was going for a swagger strat. I'm, I'm on—I'm on tempo this week. Um, uh, yeah, makes so sense. So I was max special defense assault vest. Oh, essentially because okay. I was like, listen, I'm still two shotting things at plus two. Like I—I I think I two shot pre marine at plus two with um, max quake. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. And that was like Dynamax Primarina. So I was like, okay, I don't really need to invest into attack. Yeah. Uh, my attack can't get lowered by Intimidate. I have to be careful with like Will-O-Wisps if he had... I don't even remember if he had a Will-O-Wisp option or anything. I um, did, actually. I was... Uh, I had a uh, Tora Cat on the team. And I, I was thinking you might run yeah, Inner Focus. I was like, oh, like I don't want to, you know, bring it out and just have it be useless. Because I played Kangaskhan in week one, forgot I had Inner Focus. Uh, oh, yeah. And I was like, whoops. <laughs> Yeah, so, so like the the whole thing with like the Mudsdale is that like once Trick Room went up, mm -hmm. I really didn't have to click any move besides in my head when I was thinking about prep, I didn't have to click any move besides Max Quake, yeah, because yeah. it would just get it to an unkillable state. Speaking of unkillable state, what was with Klefki game one where it actually came down to a one v one? I was I was so <laughs> surprised where Klefki was like legitimately it had a chance there where i was like if i crit or get a special defense drop there's a, there's a chance i do this yeah i know i was i was nervous i was like oh my goodness is this happening uh yeah I, like the muds still ended up you know giving it the boost too with quake and steel spike so it was at plus one for both and then uh yeah i think and it screens geez. up for both as well i was like oh my god <laughs> yeah and i was like i could click hydro cannon but i really don't want to miss like i really don't want to gamble uh but with a hail i think i was like i think it's enough uh and if not i'm just gonna cry <laughs> oh my god and i was i was i was all over all over that play you made, I was like, oh my god, he did it. Um, when you went for the Max Hailstorm into the Mudsdale, I was like, he called the freaking sunny day. Yeah, I was like, yeah, because I, I watched your uh, your first week just to get some sense of what the Klefki could do, and I was like, I mean, if you're bringing sun, there's just no way it can't have sunny day. It's just such a good option. So I was like, you know, I can get around that, do a little bit more damage, plus get the little bit of hail chip. Um, yeah, and, and I thought I was being, I thought I was being slick, because I was like, listen, 
I could click light screen, but it technically doesn't block as much damage from a water yeah. move as Sunny Day would. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I thought I was slick there, and then you caught me. So literally the entire match was out. Like, my end was, got him. I've been got. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the cycle. It's like, I got him. And I, I feel that, yeah. I mean, Draft League feels a lot like that. I don't know if you've played in uh, you know any Draft Leagues before, but it, it feels like so much about prep is like trying to predict what your opponent's going to bring and then like just trying to one up that a little bit uh yeah and it's interesting because like with vgc there's just like so many more options because now it's like two pokemon can support each other as opposed to like one being used to counter one specific other pokemon yeah and, and you guys missed this initially because it was cut off to the void uh aaron's running tickle whimsicott which absolutely would have destroyed mudsdale if it came down to that yeah and the idea behind it was i was thinking of like at first I wanted Charm, right? Because I was like, I need to shut down this Mudsdale as much as possible. But I was like, one of the things about Draft League that always can be really frustrating is when you use a move and like it ends up being like a super tech move that's not relevant for any other matchups. And so I was like, you know, Tickle is really interesting because I can combo that with on Pheasant. Uh, and it means like even if you don't, you know, prioritize Mudsdale early on, I can just go like Tickle Airstream or Tickle Max Strike uh, onto anything that's not Mudsdale and it does a ton of damage too yeah, with that defense the, the, drop. So it kind of covers for both ends. Dude, and honestly, I almost went with Coaching. So it would have, mm. I almost went with Coaching on the Hitmontop. I ended up dropping it for Faint. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought Coaching Hitmontop would be really cool. So there's there's an alternate universe there somewhere where you're clicking tickle and I'm clicking coaching and we're just getting the, and this mud steel is just sitting there like what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. I, I had a great time playing it this week, man. Um I played a, I played a lot of people that I like that I like look up to when I was first starting in VGC. Uh, I think you're literally the last person I managed to get to play. Oh, there we go, man. Uh, so I mean, I thank you for the kind words. I I was, you know, hyping you up uh at the beginning of the battle as well and I, I think uh your channel has been super impressive because to me it's like when people ask me, like, how do I get into making VGC content? I actually point them to you a lot of the times because I'm like, look, like, he's been making, like, really high quality stuff. Uh, and it's, like, super, super accessible for everyone to watch. And, like, the content varies as well. So, I, I mean, I, I hopefully, you know, we'll be able to bring more subs over to you from from this battle and just from the WBE. But keep up the good work, man. Oh, thank you, Aaron. I really appreciate those words. Yeah, no, um, there was one time where you were doing this live stream. And, you know, you know, Big Slim. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He's yeah, Mount Silver. Mount Silver, dude. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, I was just sitting there doing some physics homework and then I get this discord PM and he goes, Marcos, Aaron just gave you the shout out of a lifetime on his, on his Twitch channel. And then I hop in and you go, Oh, Hey Moxie, I just happened to be talking about you. I, I had no idea. No, nah, man. Yeah. I, I remember that moment specifically. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, and like, I, I do I, really I mean it. Cause I think, you know, VGC content, it's really interesting. Cause it's like not entirely saturated, but you know, everyone wants just like come out and just do battle videos and it's like you're competing against a stiff market where like you have a lot of like big name players who have all these accomplishments to their names and i want like people to know that like that doesn't need to be the case right like i, I think like the fact that you've been able to build up this channel and like create such educational content shows that like people shouldn't be afraid to like try and make content you know uh, yeah and overall like, i think it's just like a, a, a breath of fresh air uh, yeah, it, you know? it's a scary thing to get into a uh, vgc content creation yeah. specifically because um they're already very established names and exactly. it, here's the thing it's it's very oversaturated at the bottom yeah. if that makes sense at the bottom everyone's doing like laddering content which i'm guilty of recently just because of time constraints i have been able to write like video essays uh for the past month Absolutely. Uh, yeah. which i'm gonna go back to that eventually but um like it's very oversaturated at the bottom everyone's doing laddering content with very little to set them apart from other people uh so i always have this philosophy of once you have found your niche audience or your niche of content, you're able to fall back on the oversaturated market because you have that one little edge. Like, I already have the audience. I don't have to earn the audience through the showdown lives. 100%. Like, I've exactly. earned the audience through the other content. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I, I I always appreciate the kind words, man. Like, it means a lot to hear from someone that, like, inspired me to YouTube. But for anyone watching at home, uh, thank you for watching the battle. Uh, thank you for uh, the post-game call, Aaron. I very much appreciate it. Of course, man. Thanks for having me on. And uh, you should jump on the channel sometime. For sure, man. Anytime you anytime you have a, a spot for me to hop on, if you want me to do some thievel BS because that's honestly 90% of what I've been doing recently. <laughs> uh, like, I feel like I'm just the thievel person at this point, but... <laughs> hey, there's, yeah. no, there's no shame in that, man. I, I have actually not tried it out yet, so I think uh, it should definitely get you on sometime soon because I, I want to see how it works.
For sure, man. Just hit me up whenever. But yeah, Sounds thank good. you all for watching, guys. I-, I would say go sub to Aaron, but you definitely already are. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> Have a nice night, guys. See ya. Peace.